All right, let's get into <clears throat> some drama shit here. I some, love drama, especially Star Wars drama. Especially since you have been out of the loop, because I, I've heard nothing but people shitting on everything. Um, it is concerning to say the least. I tried to reloop so, myself, but I didn't hear about this, so I'm excited. You gotta get you gotta get looped. So <clears throat> Josh Gad, who is low key one of my favorite people alive, did an interview. I don't know what show, or it looks like it was on ABC. Yeah, it looks like it may, it might have been a part of the Jimmy Kimmel show. But Daisy Ridley was discussing uh, Ray's parents. All right, so hold on, hold on to your butts. So, quote, at the beginning, there was toying with an Obi-Wan connection, and then it really went to that she was no one. When it came to episode nine, JJ pitched me the film and was like, so yeah, Palpatine's granddaddy, like your granddaddy. Then two weeks later, he was like, yeah, we're not sure, so we, she might still be no one. There was a lot said there in two or three sentences. <laughs> So, uh, so if you're writing seven, eight, and nine, so okay, on the surface, on the surface, everyone's like, "Oh my god, they kept changing their minds. It's shitty. You know, it's all over the place." Like even from an actor's point of view, Ray is supposed to be playing this person, knowing one thing that she is possibly a Kenobi, and then you go to the next movie, and no, 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 she's no one, and then you get to the next fucking movie, and now she's someone else completely, and it's like. It's just concerning that they didn't have a path for her. Yeah. Now, I guess my, my only rebuttal would be that, like, large things were changed in the original trilogy. Vader was Luke's dad. It's, oh, by the way, episode six, Leia is your sister. Right. So there, I, and I don't think that was written from day one, especially the, the Vader being dad. I don't think that was written day one. I think that was a change right at the last second. But. This is modern story writing. Yeah. And you're writing a trilogy all at once for one reason. So it fucking flows and you have a direction from day one. Well, they didn't really write it all at once, though. That's the problem. Well, obviously, they, they had an idea, but they kept flip-flopping. And I don't know. Maybe this is, it was kind of a large thing that Ryan Johnson did kind of change. It, that's what it sounds like. JJ had to go back in and kind of refix it, but also changed his mind in refixing it. But see, just in, a lot. Go ahead. A lot of people view it as there wasn't really a plan, and then Ryan kind of set things on a trajectory, only to have JJ come back into the picture and just rewrite everything. Which is the problem. There's a lot of Star Wars fans that consume every single piece of content, and they know what canon is. And there's comics, and there's books, what have you that established backstory for characters like poe and rose and then when you get into episode nine jj has come back into the mix and like he can't follow every single thread from every single little book and young adult book and comic so he just does his own thing and now all that stuff is just thrown away and it doesn't really count i mean i get that they they do things they roll with the punches as shinobi says it wasn't all planned out i get that the problem with that i have is that Daisy Ridley lied and kind of stuck to that the whole time, assuming because Disney didn't let her say anything, which I guess makes sense. But she's, she was saying in press and all this that, oh, you know, we've known the whole time, like nothing's changed. Nothing's different. It's been this way. I've known this. And then here we go. Obviously, that's all a fucking lie. Yeah. I mean, Shinobi's making the same points that I had, but it's. Like, Vader wasn't always meant to be the chosen one. Luke and Leia weren't always meant to be related. A lot of famous lines weren't written until they until filming. Like, I, I, I get the creative... I get the process, especially back in the 70s and early oh, 80s. Oh, yeah. And especially with something but, like Star Wars in the 70s and 80s. But, like, we're... This is... we're It's 2020 right now. And stuff like Marvel has do, been doing crazy things. And I'm sure that small things have changed under Marvel's control, too. But like, there's certain threads that don't. Yeah, 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 exactly. And the the fact that you're gonna, I mean, who's the main character of the sequel trilogy? Ray, Ray, and you're gonna say every episode it changed. Like Daisy Ridley has to act a certain way, and she's told one thing in episode seven, then she's told another thing in episode eight. Now she's uh, scrap all that. Right. Now you gotta pretend. Now you gotta pretend like you you've had a, a broken past because your last name is Palpatine right. now. 
well, well, what the fuck? Like, right. And now you want to go I, kill this guy. I would, I would have been pissed if I was Daisy. I would have been pissed if I was a, her supporting cast. Right. Like you're supposed to like. It, well, think think uh, about the whole thing to, of Poe being a spice runner. That's just thrown in out of nowhere. Like that wasn't his past. He's been like a rebel fighter the whole time because his parents were rebel fighters, and now he's like a spice runner all of a sudden. Like what? No, that's a valid point. They were talking about like the new Poe book. It was written to kind of tie that into Poe's already established backstory somehow, and like kind of mesh the two. Um, let's just say Daisy Ridley did a fantastic job in all three movies trying to handle all of those changes and everything with the story and with the character choices and with whatever JJ threw at her. I mean, she put on an amazing performance the whole time. So props to her. I mean, I can't imagine like. That must be so frustrating. So all the stuff about yeah. the original trilogy being changed and written on the fly, like I totally get that. It's lucky that it works. It ex- I'm just going to say true. that. That's very true. It, it explains things. Uh, it explains the process, I guess. Doesn't necessarily make it good or the right choice. Like I feel like they could have done things differently, but it does at least explain away. It gives you an excuse. You know, I think the difference is the original trilogy was George's. He was the one making the changes. Kind of. You know what I'm saying? There was still one storyline in his head, and he was tweaking it along the way, but we're getting, you know, to the end. This one, it had, it felt, it did feel like there was 10 hands in there, small changes, different directors. And I know, I know the original trilogy had different directors, but George was still there saying, no, fuck off, do it this way. (laughs) Kind of. I would wager, and I'm not an expert on the, uh, the filmmaking process of the old three. But I would wager that a lot of the stuff that people really, really fucking love from five is because of the writer and the director. I would bet yeah. it's from Kirshner and it's from Lawrence Kasdan. I would put my money on that. And George, like George, like is uh, the puppet master behind the scenes. But when they get to set, I feel like a lot of that really falls back to what the director decides. Also, have you heard ran- randomly? Uh, I heard that George was being pulled back in. I heard a rumor about that too that Kathleen is moving to a different company and they're bringing George back. I knew Kathleen was moving on some way somehow. Uh it's unfortunate. I don't know how much control she actually had or how much pushback she actually gave. But uh the way everything ended up, a lot of people a lot of people are, you know, upset with Star Wars and her name's all over it. So Yeah, but a lot of people were pissed about how the trilogy ended in 83. They were pissed at 6. Half the movie is Ewoks. I mean, people were pissed about things. Yeah, I'm not. And again, I'm not saying it's her fault. I'm saying she was the one in charge when all this happened. Yeah. So they look to you because you allowed it to happen. Not that you chose all the direction or the writing or any of it. Right. It still happened under your watch. And, you know, regardless, pe- some people are upset. You know, a lot of people, supposedly. So, um, but yeah, I guess when this came out, people, uh, of, of course, all the haters were like, oh, of course, see more evidence that it's shit yeah. and it supports my my theory of everything sucks ass, which it kind of does. It's it's a glaring. I it, It's, it, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at a, a screenshot of her smiling. So that big Daisy Ridley smile. But I'm like, I wonder if she really knew what she was doing when she was saying this and how much it actually means. Yeah, because that's Wars the people. problem is like the actors don't realize how rabid star wars fans are i guess sometimes they do like when they get attacked like daisy ridley and uh kelly marie tran like left social media because star wars fans are such dickheads but a lot of times like they're saying something in the moment during an interview they don't realize it's going to have like repercussions through the entire fandom which they they shouldn't have to i mean they're paid to to act and then they can leave it behind harrison ford was always really good at that but they're no more they're no longer an employer you're gone Star Wars fans, like we're all passionate, we all we all suck at the same time. Super annoying. I try yeah. not to, but I mean, you fall into it every once in a while. How many times have I said on this podcast that Republic Commando was awesome and Clone Wars is stupid? So many times. It's not really true. I just like the Republic Commando a lot better because I was seventeen when I read those. 